So what's going on guys? Some Halo 4 coming at you right now. Not some good gameplay at all because I'm a little bit rusty. I haven't played it since it released. I've lost my golden touch. But that's not what we're here. We're here to have a real talk on bullying. And this is a very, very serious topic. I'm going to try my best to word things as best as possible. Try to describe and experience what is going to be put into this. Um, one thing I do urge you guys to do if you're listening to this commentary right now, do not click off the video. Please sit through to the end. Bullying is a serious, serious thing going on in today's youth, and even adults deal with it. Women, guys, boys, girls, squirrels, everything alike deal with bullying. It's natural. What this topic and the commentary is going to be about is how to handle it, how to understand it, um, whether or not you are the bully or the victim, or you're just a bystander. Odds are you know plenty of people that are being bullied right now. Odds are your children will deal with this in the future, whether or not they're the victim, the bully, or just a bystander. Everybody has the ability to do something and change this. I lost two friends to suicide in high school and middle school due to bullying. It's a very serious topic. I was bullied. So this hits home for me, and I hope you guys can actually appreciate this. Whether or not you guys are a bully, listen to this. Understand this from somebody else's perspective. Understand what you're doing to other people. As a victim, understand there are things you can do from this video that will help you in your course to stand up to the bully and make a difference. For those guys that sit back bystanders, you see in today's media, in movies, you see Spider-Man where he's getting pushed up against the lockers and all of a sudden he whips ass on people. You see the audience building around him watching this kid potentially get his ass beat. Nobody steps in and does anything. That's not okay. So hopefully, whether or not you're neutral or a part of the actual act of bullying, please listen to the video. Take some of this home. Share it with your friends. Um... Odds are someone somewhere is experiencing something like this, and you have the ability and therefore the responsibility to act on it. Now to first talk about bullying, you need to understand it. Bullying is the act of mental or physical abuse from another person to another person. Basically, a bully is somebody that causes physical, emotional, psychological pain to another person, something that stems for a long time. Now as much as you guys think, as a bully's perspective, may think it's short term, um, the emotional wreck and mayhem that you cause to a person can mentally frustrate and just tear up another person. Yeah, the bruises and the boo-boos heal. No big deal. It's the mental aspect. The feeling like you're nothing is what stands behind. That's what is left behind. The emotional warfare that you leave behind really, really does damage children nowadays. And it's not, you know, strictly um, re uh, restricted to children. You could be bullied. I was bullied by boss. I was bullied by one of my bosses. And I let it go because bullying doesn't bother me. It wasn't like physical abuse. But he was taking abuse of the power and, and, and basically making it making me his bitch, which is not right. But it's my job. My money's on the line. So I let it go. It wasn't too big a deal. As an adult, you learn to understand this a little bit more. But it happens in the workplace, at school, at the gym. Bullying is a part of today's youth, society, you know, media, everything just blows it out of proportion. But it is an epidemic. It is something that is growing. It is something that is out there. But also, with the growth of this is the growth of awareness. My wife is a teacher. They're teaching her classes nowadays. In school, the teachers are learning how to handle people that get bullied, how to handle the kids that deal with this, how to handle the bullies themselves. And I think that's great. The best way to handle this is with awareness. Some people need it a little bit more than others. Some people need adjusted help, and that's fine. Generally, one thing you need to understand about a bully is we as people are not naturally. I mean, we're, 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 we're in love with power. We want to become better. We want to prove that we're better than other people. It's built into us. One way people do this is by physically abusing people. You think of, uh, you know, bullying. You think of some big tough jock pushing a nerd into a locker or a trash can. That's generally one of the first ideas you think of. Um, and, and that does happen. That does happen. Whether or not you've seen it or not, or that's in your school or something like that, is just completely dependent on where you go to school to. You know what I mean? It's just kind of how it is. Um, so it could be physical abuse. And generally, it's replicated. It's something at home. you got to feel for the bully because nobody just wants to cause pain to another people. You know, to another people, to another person. Generally, it's it stems from something that's not complete in their own life. There's a void there that makes them want to do this. They get satisfaction and feelings. They feel power and valuable and important when they can control you. So when they feel they can control you, they feel like they're relevant. They feel like they have power, which is something they're obviously lacking somewhere else in their life. They come home every night to the mom drugged up and passed out on the couch or a father that beats them. They're dealing with some of their own struggles, and that's what you got to understand. No bully is just a bully because he's a bully. 
there's something going wrong in his life to make him act that way. So you've got to feel for them at some point. They are as much a victim as the person that they're terrorizing. But what a bully has to understand is they're causing long-term mental and psychological pain to other people. Yeah, the bruises heal. So what I encourage bullies to do is to reach out. Now, actually, all of you, any of you guys that are bullied or anyone that wants to learn how to help, is to reach out to other people and learn a little bit about it and step in and intervene when you can. Now, my situations with bullying were different. Um, elementary school, I was always considered the smart kid. Out throughout my entire, you know, schooling career or whatever you want to call it, education, um, I was always considered the smartest kid in school, uh, the guy that was most likely to succeed, and I blew that through pretty hard. Um, whether or not you believe it or not, that's just generally the path that I was taking. I was considered the nerd. Um, you know, kids copied off my tests. I was never bullied or picked on because I was just kind of chill. It came into my high school years where, you know, I'm naturally goofy and funny, and I was just a likable guy. You know what I mean? So I didn't deal with some of the harsh bullying that a lot of youth do, uh, a lot of the youth does today. So generally, I was a likable guy. People would ask for my help, and I would help it. My nickname in high school was Ask Jeeves, simply because I was white and smart. <laughs> That's just kind of how it was. Um, most of the bullying that was inflicted upon me was racial. Um, and I know it sounds weird. It could be it could be so many different terms. And I'm gonna give you some of the stories about the two friends that I had that lost their lives due to bullying. Um, my my situations with it were due to racism. You know, kids would just walk by and you know call me a cracker or something like this. I I was in a predominantly black school. There were like three kids, three white kids in the school throughout almost my entire youth, entire education. Um, I was like the only white kid in school. So I was anytime I was picked on, it was because of, of how I was different. You know, there was a target on my back because I was a small white kid. There was a target on, you know, the nerd's back because he's nerdy glasses and got a pocket protector. You know what I mean? You're an easy target for those people to try to feel better about themselves. There's insecurities within the bully that make them do that to you. I mean, it's just how it is. So, growing up in middle school, I can't even remember his name, and it breaks my heart. I can't remember his name. It starts with a T. Um, and he, he, I can remember his smile. I can remember his personality. And he was the nicest kid I've ever met. The kind of kid I wouldn't want to introduce to my mom because my mom would be like, why can't you act more like him? He was a great kid. Um, we were in middle school. We were about 13 years old. And, um, yeah, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, somewhere around there. And uh, some some kid just thought it was funny to de-pants him in the middle of the locker room. And, um, yeah, yeah, this wasn't like a showering gym or anything like that. So, you know, it's just how it is. Younger kids, lack of puberty, late bloomers. Um, and he was a late bloomer. He hadn't hit puberty yet. So his um, little manhood was not yet formed into... A full-fledged dragon yet. So he was sitting there with a smaller member and had not been through puberty, and he became the blunt of all kinds of jokes. He was made fun of, um, and it made him, you know, imagine that. And at that time, I was a late bloomer too. I, I had not been through puberty. At the time that this happened, had that have been me that got de-pantsed, I would have been the one dealing with this. Every day he'd come to school and some kid or some girl or somebody would laugh and make fun of him and be like, oh, you have a little dick, you have a little dick, and it tore him down. It made him feel insecure. It made him feel like he was useless. It made him feel like he was different, not welcome. He was made fun of, picked at. And he ended up taking his own life. And it broke my heart. I wish there was something else I could do. There was another friend I had in middle school. His name was Corey. He was a good friend of mine. Um, his, his, his mother was a hoarder. If you guys know what a hoarder is, it's a person that basically just collects things and keeps everything. His house, no joke, was the worst. The, the, the things that you see on TV and the television shows are nothing compared to what this, this woman had. Um, she had boxes full of stuff stacked to the roof. She had, a, she had animals. The whole house smelled like cat piss. But it was to the point that there were no beds for anyone to sleep in because there were nothing but stacks and stacks of boxes and stuff. Um, the bathtub and the, and the kitchens, they were all stacked full of boxes. It was impossible to cook food or shower. So he had this long hair, long blonde hair. Um, he, he smelled like cat pee because he couldn't shower. He was often made fun of. Extremely gifted. He was a great bowler. He was a great soccer player. Great kid all around. But he was bullied. I remember one instance, and this is, this is important. I remember one instance where he was getting made fun of by this kid. Um, his name was Courtney. And I remember that because that was kind of a girl's name. But this kid, Courtney, was picking on him. And I beat the shit out of Courtney right there on the soccer field. Don't know what snapped into me, but I felt like I had to do something. Courtney never fucked with Corey again. Never. And I don't know what it is. You as the bystanders, you have the potential ability to stop this kind of stuff. You don't sit back and watch what happens to the nerd get punched in the face. You know what's likely to happen. 
You stand up and you intervene. You do something, especially the women. Women get bullied too. It's it's more mental than physical with women. Um, you know, it's emotions and beauty and you're fat and you're ugly. It's generally the kind of bullying they deal with. Um, but women are not generally going to get hit by a man. So if you see a man bullying another man or a nerd, you as a woman can have a free pass to walk in there and intervene and step in because as soon as a woman gets in the way, odds are he's going to stop bullying that person. The moment and the momentum is gone because you've stood up for something. Most guys will not harm or be mean to a woman. It's just how it is. So that's just a pro tip for those girls out there. Everybody has the ability to do something. That time, I made a difference. I stopped the bully. You guys can do that. Many times I've been in a fight with somebody because they were bullying somebody. I can't tolerate it. I can't stand it. Um, as being a victim of a bullying, if it's a physical bully, don't be afraid to hit the dude back. Might get your ass beat, but that heals back. It'll make you feel better because you stood up for yourself. That's why I was no longer, I was always, you know, verbally abused because when people realized they couldn't push me around, the only thing they could do to pick on me is call me, you know, Cracker or, or Whitey or Ghost or Casper or something. So that's what I dealt with. And as, as small as you may be, fighting back could be a, a possibility. I don't encourage it because it's not safe. Um, it could in, in turn backfire and he could, you know, pound you even harder, but... It'll make you feel better because you did something about it and you're not just a pushover anymore. It'll make him think a little bit. Maybe he will. I mean, many times I've seen this happen. And, you know, the, the, the first bully that ever tried to bully me around by pushing me punched him in his face, knocked him out clean. And he was all of a sudden made fun of and he was the bully at school. Or he was the victim. People made fun of him because he got knocked out by me, the little white kid. And now his reputation was killed and now he was been making fun of. And the momentum shift. And... You know, that's just how the youth is. People feel that stuff, and you need to step up, and you need to do something about it. Another friend I had, um, he was in high school, and um, he was gay. Uh, he got picked on all the time for it. We had a school that was really, really not open to having gay kids. I mean, there, for, for we had like 58 openly gay kids in the school out of 550. So there was a good percentage of kids at this school that were gay. We had almost 10, you know, about almost 10 percent of of the kids were actually gay at the school, but they would get beat up. They'd get made fun of. They'd be fags, this and that. Um, and the abuse went on. Some of the guys fought back and would actually fight the guys. Some of the guys would just take it. Um, there was a there was a group. There was a group called the GSA. It was called the Gay Straight Alliance. I was the only straight kid that went to it because I felt like I could make a difference. Um, and I'm not weirded out or uncomfortable around gay people it's maybe it's just something is it's generally an insecurity you feel because you don't understand or don't understand why or don't find it appealing people just generally think ewey you know gay guys is disgusting but it's just because you don't understand it so i was fine and comfortable around there and i i, I remember one guy used to get beat up all the time i don't i don't know his real name i just know the name he wanted to be called by and it was jasmine um but he got bullied and he ended up uh he ended up taking his own life too um and it was pretty bad. There was another gay kid there, too, that got made fun of because he was bi, because he liked dudes and women. And he was known for having sex with, you know, tons of the guys and tons of the girls in the school. He got around. And um, the first time I ever got maced was because of this kid. Um, the main guy that bullied him. Um, and if he gets fueled. The bullies get fueled because people laugh and they think it's funny. Um it's the attention that makes the bully, it's, it's what makes the bully fuel. I mean, if they're by themselves, nobody's going to bully anybody. So it's just like, I don't know. Um, but I got maced because he wanted to try to mace this guy um, next to me in the on the bus. We were on the bus on the way back to school. And um, basically he missed him and got me and my best friend in the seat. And we got maced pretty hard. Um, and this was actual full-blown police mace. I, from where we're from, I think. Pepper spray is illegal, or is legal, but mace, which is like a higher grade or some shit, more concentrated, I have no clue, is something else. So um, we got full-blown maced. He got expelled and kicked off the bus and everything like it was never allowed to be on a bus again. Um, and that was his way to handle the bully. So as much as that shit hurt, felt like wood chips or pain or just the stuff in your throat. It was, it was painful, but, um, you know, I, I felt bad for him. I was pissed that I got maced, but... I felt good knowing that he stood up for himself. He wasn't just going to get made fun of. Yeah, he wasn't going to be able to beat this guy up. There isn't anything you could do. The best way to get back at a bully is to talk to him. Understand you can reach out to your teachers. Teachers are now being trained for this. My wife is being trained for this. Reach out to friends you know. Reach out to your parents. 
As much as it may make you feel weak, you're not alone. There are millions of people that are being bullied, and the only way to handle this is by talking to somebody. Um, mentally is probably the best way to get back at a bully. Um, but the downturn is, though you will probably be successful and you can stop him from bullying you, anything you do to publicly humiliate him or mentally you know, kind of bar him away um, is probably going to turn him into the victim. Then that will actually cause harm to him. And in turn, you will become the bully to slightly do that. So understand it's kind of a very, very hard situation to handle. Um, most people are too afraid to, don't know how to. And generally in the situations that people do handle a bully, it's more humiliating to the bully. And then they feel even worse than they were before. So it's a really hard situation to deal with. I think the best way to do it is to kill them with kindness, to talk to them, try to understand them, um, try to get them help, try to get help yourself, talk to teachers, because too many people, too many good people, too many nice people lose their lives because they just feel like everything's against them. They get made fun of. Um, and it's just a painful world that we live in. So I just wanted to share this with you, some of the stories that I've experienced. Um, I overcome them. You know, I was just a little bit more likable of a guy. Um, like I said, anything could have changed. If I'd have been the guy that got the pants back in the day before I hit puberty, Lord knows what would have happened to me. That's every day coming into school and knowing what's going to happen and people making fun of you and you having nicknames and girls looking and laughing at you. You'd feel so insecure, so horrible. Just imagine that pain in you. That's what bullying does. That's what happens. And only we can prevent it. You as the people can, can do something, can change it. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed the commentary. Be sure to drop a like rating if you did. Leave another comment down below for some more Real Talk topics. This one hit home for me, so hopefully you have enjoyed it. You've been looking at a black screen for, I don't know, roughly six minutes. So if you're here this long, you did listen to me, you did want to hear about this, and you enjoyed the commentary. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out. Get it.